Hi, in this video I'm going to make a walkthrough of Francois Cholet's example of using transformers for IMDb movie review sentiment classification. For example, we have a movie here and you can see some reviews are positive and some are negative and basically this is going to use a transformer network to uh, to classify this but this is a very easy example that can be done with RNNs, uh, LSTMs but uh, this is basically the purpose that it serves is to show how to use the transformer network in Keras, in Python. There's going to be another example uh, using this transformer in Keras for translation between English and Spanish. So, uh, as you may know already, this uh, transformer network was introduced five years ago by Google Brain and Google uh, Research. And this is the paper I'm going to put in the reference. I'm go not going to give detail of how this works. I'm going to put some videos that I recommend you to watch before uh, going in here. And but if to give a quick overview, basically this uh, new layer called multi-head attention, which basically behaves like a dot product between these three inputs is meant to replace the LSTMs, GRUs, etc. and doesn't have a state, so that's one of the difference. Another difference is that it can pay attention uh, between different uh, words in, for the case of natural language processing. As you may know, this is very uh, has made a, lo made a lot of progress in natural language processing applications uh, like GP3 and things like that. Uh, it's able to pay attention uh, between words at a long distance. It doesn't need a state and also it has a positional encoding that uh, encodes in the in the semantic uh, vector it encodes also uh, the position uh, that's part of the attention mechanism it, it has a layer for attention for the input it has a layer for attention for the output and also a cross attention between the two and finally a feed forward to do the prediction of the next word or a classification or whatever so you can see that uh, it's going to have a residual connection to keep the input data coming forward and there's the residual always going to have normalization, a feed forward for both of them. And yeah, and basically the attention, as you can see in here, uh, is a, a combination of these three inputs. Uh, they're called value, key, and query. And it's basically a dot product. So uh, the, the terms and reminds uh, can remind of a, a lookup table in which you have a key and a value and get the value with the key. So in here you multiply multiply the key and the query using the transpose and then multiply by the value and that's how the attention mechanism works. It's like a dot product. Uh, there's a video that I'm going to show here that he shows, like, he compares it with the dot product of vectors in which the more aligned they are, uh, the closer to one they are, and the more orthogonal, the closer to zero. So that's how uh, it does the attention thing. So, okay, going back to the uh, to the example, uh, I was able to execute this in less than an hour. It takes a lot of time, so I'm gonna execute most of the commands, uh, starting with downloading the data. I, I have it here, but I'm gonna run it again. And basically, the last steps of training are not going to run uh, because it, it takes a, a lot of time. And it, yeah, so the training uh, steps are not going to run it, but if you want to run it, uh, I made all of this with Google Collaboratory. And as mentioned before, this is based on Francois Cholet example shown in here. I'm going to put that in the references as well. And you can try it using Google Collaboratory. You don't have to install anything. You just go to the website and do the copy paste uh, like I did in here. And basically, the uh, first thing is going to download and extract all of this. And if you try this, it's going to be real slow. So I recommend using notebook settings, set it to GPU. It, if you have one, it's going to be, it, 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 without GPU, it, it, it takes maybe the whole day to train. It's not worth it. Okay, so first we are going to have the paths uh, for validation, training, and test, as always. And this is going to be the path, which is the folder that a Google Collaborative provides for you and that's like a temporary uh, directory that it gets blown away after your session is over and it is going to copy a, we're going to copy a, the files from the training and it's failing uh, to me because I already have them here so I'm not going to run it again uh, but the thing is that it's going to take a uh, randomly uh, some files uh, from the training directory uh, with the C to be, uh, be able to repeat it and then it's going to take the 20% uh, 
and we've seen in this case you can see let me see if I can see the value it's loading yeah to uh, the last 2500 uh, uh, samples so it's gonna have negative iteration so it's gonna go from uh, back f uh, from the back uh, you would, uh, take the last 2500 tw and until the end so you'd have a total 2500 files in here and you're gonna take take them from the training and just move them to the uh, to the validation so now we have validation and now I'm gonna just print what I have in here and for some reason uh, Francois uh, decided that the test set is gonna be bigger than the training set I don't know why he did that but I, it works anyway but maybe it could have performed better if more of the test data would have been moved to the training set but the validation as you expect only have 2500 is the shortest one so now let's create the data sets, uh, which in my lab they, they are called data stores, but it's the same thing. So the batch size is gonna be 32, so we're gonna take 32 reviews at a time, and this uh, takes data, data set from directory automatically is gonna infer the, the, the label for the sample. In this case, uh, the negative reviews are gonna be zero, and the positive reviews are gonna be one. So let's just run it, and you can see the total number of samples, uh, the corresponding folder, uh, 2500 for training, and around the same for it's just the name of the files that vary, but uh, they have the no same number. Okay, okay, anyway, uh, let's now we're gonna create the text vectorization. The text vectorization that you see here uh, is gonna convert the words to a code. So let's say that you have a vocabulary, in this case it's gonna be 20,000 words, then you're gonna have uh, from zero to 20,000, but uh, it, this has to be efficient because you want low values, I guess, uh, for various uh, words that are more common. So we have to train it, and uh, basically we say, okay, we want uh, 20,000 words, we have a maximum review size for this example of 600, so we're gonna create the object, and we're gonna pass a data store that only contains words. So for that, we basically uh, use the map data data set. And this is gonna take a lambda uh, function, and the inputs are gonna be the the review and the label, which is positive or negative. But we don't care about it, so we take just ignore it. So we just return the text. So that's all we have in here. As you can see, the original was a batch data set. Now we have a map data set, which is equivalent to in MATLAB what they have of a transform data store. And now we're going to import the Keras layers and create the text vectorization. It's going to train it. It's going to take a while. And now we're going to codify the the reviews that we have. So so we're basically going to take another map data set, and the lambda this time is not going to ignore the label. It's going to include the label as is and apply the text vectorization to encode the words. And you can see here, if we print out the first one, we're just gonna iterate through the training set, data set, and print the, 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 the sample and the label. And the sample, you can see that it's size, uh, let's run it again, 32 by 600, because we have a maximum of 600 words per review, and as you can see, uh, these ones do not reach to the end. That's usually that's usual, and 32 because we have a batch size of 32, so we're gonna have 32 reviews, and also the out uh, the labels are gonna be a vector of zero and ones, so we have 32 of them. So each of the this is review number one, which is codified. You can see that words are just numbers, and this is, should be a rare word, I think. So for this review, it's gonna be negative, a negative review, and the last one, uh, this one right here, is a positive review, as you can see in here. Okay. So now, uh, but before then, uh, the original data sets, I just wanted to point out that the original data set is just text. So if you just print it, which I did at the end in here, you can see that uh, this is a review, just a text review, and uh, I think it, Harrison Ford is mentioned somewhere around. So so I think this uh, refers to a movie of seven, six days or seven nights, you, you can see here. It was a cheap movie, actually. But uh, you can see that it's a positive review. So at the end, we're gonna fit this uh, into the model to see if we can predict correctly. And also, of course, we're gonna measure the validation accuracy. Okay, 
So now let's create the encoder layer. The encoder layer is going to implement the, the network that we see here, at least partially. So first in the init, we're going to just create the layers and just capture the configuration. In this case, the embedding beams, the teams, number of heads, we're going to create the, the multi-head attention using the number of heads and uh, let me see how many number of heads. Number of heads too. You see, this is a difference between the paper. In the paper, you can see that the, you have three heads, but this is gonna have two heads. And you're gonna pass that in here. Uh, the embedding dims is basically this number coincides with the embedding layer. The embedding layer in the network, you're gonna see it later, is is basically com gonna convert the code in here that you see into a semantic vector. So for each of these elements, for each of these scalars, you're gonna get a, a vector. Uh, in, the, in our case, it's gonna be embedded size, gonna be 256. So each, you're gonna have 256 dimension representing semantics. For example, you can have something like uh, the, the species of an animal or uh, how fast it is, uh, things like that. Basically, it go, it's gonna encode a 256 important semantic elements that is going to be trained based on our body of text. Okay, so you create the multi-head attention. You use the same embedding theme for the multi-head attention because uh, the input for the multi-head attention is going to be the embedding layer. And then the output is going to be a series, uh, a series of layers, sequential layers. So it's using the sequential API from Keras, but down here, we're gonna use the functional API from Keras. Okay, so the output of the multi-headed attention, well, we're gonna see it down here, but uh, the sequential, this dense projection is gonna be a dense layer followed by another, a couple of dense layers. Okay, so when you call this, a layer this basically as you can see we're inheriting from layer so this is a custom keras layer so it's a way of uh, creating custom layers and matlab also have that, that that functionality of creating custom layers so the call is the entry point uh, this is where you create it and this is the entry point so in here you're going to get the input and the input is going to be fed to the attention it's going to have only two heads so the two inputs are fed in there as you can see in the paper you have all the inputs fed into the multi-headed attention uh, again, this is simpler than this because we are classifying a movie. In the next uh, video, I'm going to show how to use this for the translation between English and Spanish. And that might be three headed as here. Okay, so the output is fed to a normalization layer. And then we have a dense projection and then a, a normalization. And you can see the residual layer in here. So, for example, this output is going to be added to the inputs, which go directly from here. So that's the residual that comes from here to a normalization. So you see normalization, feed forward, normalization. And you have the same in here, normalization, feed forward. And then uh, from the normalization, it goes to the fully connected layer, to the dense layer, and then another residual connection to avoid losing information. That's the purpose. Okay, so now that we have the layer and we have the, we can create using the fun Keras functional API, the, the network, we the input is gonna be uh, the text, the encoded text because we're going to use uh, the, the encoded data store using the text vectorization object. Uh, yeah, using the text vectorization, that's going to be the input. So we feed the input directly to the embedding. We provide the vocabulary size 20,000, embedding 256, which, uh, and then that same parameter is, you can see that we put it into a transformer encoder. And then we have the dense layer. And the number of dense uh, dimensions, so we can have three, 32 fissures in the dense layer. Number of heads is going to be two, and then the output goes to the global max pooling. We're going to have a dropout for regularization. Another dense layer, but this is, you can see that the output is size of one because this is the one that's going to give you the Boolean classification between positive and negative uh, review. So we provide the inputs, we provide the outputs, and we create the model. We compile it using regular parameters, RMS props, binary cross entropy. And here's the summary. You can see that the input is your text and you have going to have an output of 256 size because of the embedding. The encoder is going to keep it the same and the same global pool is going to keep it the same. Dropout is going to keep it the same. And finally, the final layer is going to give you the classification. 
Okay, so now uh, we're going to train it. We're going to provide the input training data, the, the encoded uh, uh, training data, and the encoded validation data. And we're going to train it for 20 epochs. And we're going to use this callback that is going to give us the best performing uh, network across the epochs. So we just uh, call model fit. And then after that, we use this load model because the callback is going to provide us the the best uh, best model. And then we just print the the uh, evaluate with the input, the test set, the accuracy. Yeah. So you can see that the fifth one is the best performing. We could have just trained for five epochs. But now uh, the author is going to do something different. He's going to use a positional encoding, as mentioned in here. Part of the paper is that. Uh, the attention is based on the position of the word, so uh, so the position is added, and that's basically what it's gonna do. Again, it's gonna create the. This is gonna be the layer that is gonna. This is gonna replace the. This one, the embedding layer. So now the embedding layer is gonna be inside. So it's gonna create an embedding layer the same way. We provide the same information, but also it's gonna create a position embedding layer. And we're going to see how it is used. I know capture all parameters in field. And the entry point, the call, is going to take the shape of the input and takes the last dimension, which is the length, which should be 600. So it's going to create a range of values from 0 to 600. And that's going to be the positions. And that's going to be the input for the position embedding. And you can see that the position embedding is configured with the sequence length, which should be 600 again. So once you, you calculate the, the the embedding from the input the same way as we did before, and you also cal calculate the position embedding, and then just add, it, add them, like mentioned in the paper. Okay, so now we can replace a layer. Instead of having a regular embedding, we have a positional embedding. And basically, uh, the input uh, does the sequence length uh, configuration, which is 600, I expect it. That's the maximum amount of words in a review. The vocabulary size, again, the same things, and the embedding. And the input is going to be the input layer, and the output of the embedding is going to go to the transformer encoder, and then it's going to go to directly global max pooling, dropout, same thing, exactly the same thing. So now we're going to train it with exactly the same commands. And you can see that the network architecture looks the same, but probably more parameters. And now, again, the maximum is going to be at 5. We have 89%, so it improved a little bit. Uh, maybe it doesn't make much difference in here because it's, uh, again, a simple, simple classification problem. But, the, but this, I, under, I understand that it's going to be more, much difference in the next example, which is about translation between languages. And I understand that uh, not only for translation, this is good, but also maybe for conversational, conversational agents. Okay, so now uh, let's just took a, uh, now we know that the, the validation accuracy is 90%, and at the end we get the test accuracy, which is against the test, which is 88%. So let's see the previous one, a, li a little better as mentioned before. But let's take a, a quick look at how this will work uh, once trained. So we have a, we're going to take the first, uh, from the test data set, we're going to take the first uh, a review. We're just going to print it a break. And also, we're going to get the corresponding encoded. As you remember, the first data set it was the raw uh, text from the review. But then we encoded it using the text vectorization. And now we're going to take that encoded review for the first review, this one. Uh, actually, there are 32 in there because we have a batch of 32. So th this, as mentioned before, is the Harrison Ford movie. And you can see, if you pause to this, you can see that this is talking good stuff about the review so it's a cheap movie that is not that bad and and basically when we use the predict method with the encoded review we get the result and if it's higher than 5 then it's positive review uh, 0.5 I mean then uh, you can see that the first review which is this one it appears that that is a true uh, yeah so that's it for the video thank you very much